All right, here we go. I'm gonna show you guys how to power the Omnibus F7 flight controller, power your receiver with either five or 3.3 volts, depending on which receiver you have, and power your camera and video transmitter. So we will power everything in one video. And I really hope you guys are watching this before it's too late because I totally see somebody frying a receiver because the labels, it's not your fault, the labels, they're horrible. They completely screwed up the labels. So hopefully I will save somebody a receiver. As far as powering the flight controller, we will see ground and VBAT, which is going to be ground on this pin, VBAT on this pin. So the third pin down for ground, fourth pin down for VBAT, which is going to look something like this. Ground, third pin down, VBAT, fourth pin down. To wire this in, uh, you don't have to use a PDB with a separate voltage regulator, so no 5 volts, no 12 volts, no nothing like that. Just take some scrap wire and run it anywhere on your PDB where it's getting the full voltage of the battery. It can be separate pads like I have here. You can even put these wires right on top of your battery leads, or you can even use the pads that your ESC main power and ground wires go to. It doesn't matter, just anywhere where it's getting the full voltage. And then solder the other wires into the flight controller like I just showed. You can do this because this flight controller has a built-in voltage regulator, so it will uh, step it down to five volts and provide 5 volts to all the other 5 volt pins and power itself, so we're good to go. Just to show you that I'm not pulling your leg, I'm going to plug in a battery. My flagging chore is powered and nothing fried. Also by powering the flagging chore this way, it already knows what the full voltage of the battery is and uh, there's a separate circuit going to the processor uh, through a 1K and 10K resistor I would assume. And this is what's going to place voltage in beta flight, your on-screen display, and telemetry. So there's no extra steps needed. Uh, these two wires are actually doing both at the same time, powering the flight controller and providing voltage in your telemetry and everything else. Just make sure you have VBAT turned on in beta flight. As far as powering the receiver, if we flip it over and go back to the wiring diagram, this is now the back side of the flight controller. And we see ground and VCC on these two pins. Then you have these three pads, which are these three really tiny pads. Once you plug in your battery, this pad will be producing 5 volts. This pad will be producing 3.3 volts. The VCC pad is getting nothing, along with this VCC pin. It's not doing anything. Once you bridge either the 3 volt pad to VCC or the 5 volt pad to VCC, that pin will produce whichever pin you bridge VCC to. So I want 5 volts going to my receiver. I'm just going to take a little bit of solder and solder those two pads together. You don't want to solder all three pads together because something's going to fry. Now here's the important thing to know. You would think that, okay, this pin is received for UART number 1, so that's where your signal wire would go. You would think that this pin is VCC, which is going to power your receiver, and this would be ground, but that's incorrect. You can barely see right here where it says TX1. So they kind of push it off to the side and underneath this arrow to where you can't see it. And if you look at the flag and chore, you can kind of make out where it says TX1, but it didn't really print out that well. So this pin is actually transmit for UART1. This is receive for UART1. Voltage is the third pin up and ground is the fourth pin up. So don't get these mixed up and backwards. So if I plug in my battery, got the flight controller powered, and I place my ground lead on the fourth pin up and the power lead on the third pin up, we see that I'm now getting 4.88 volts, which is close enough to 5 volts, and this will power my receiver. So with my receiver soldered in from the top side, it should look something like this. Remember this pin on the very end on the corner? You're not going to use that one because that's the transmit pin. Even if you do have a receiver with telemetry, you can't use that pin because remember, UART's can only do one thing at a time. It can't do transmit and receive both. So regardless, you won't be using this pin. I've got ground, power, and signal. If I plug in my battery, we see my receiver is powered and it didn't fry. Now, how to power your camera and video transmitter. With the other Omnibus flight controllers, I know in the description it said that the power was filtered, but it, it actually wasn't. Uh, a 5 volt regulator, that doesn't count as filtering your video or anything like that. This one actually is filtered. So I got my multimeter, I know you can't see it, but I'm gonna run a continuity test. 
First, let me explain. These two pins are the RAM pins. These pins right now are doing absolutely nothing, but they can be tied in to this RAM pin, which is the pin in the middle. You have two options. You can either jump this pin, which is a five volt power source, or this pin, which is VBAT, so that's gonna be the full voltage of the battery. Jump either one of these pins to this middle pin, and whatever you jump to this pin will be produced by these two pins. For example, if I were to jump these two pins together, I would have five volts coming out of both of these pins. If I jump these two pins, I would have the full voltage of the battery coming out of these two pins. Now, I have it flipped around to the back side, but if we go from this RAM pin to this Zener diode, we get continuity. And then if we go from the other side to this inductor, we once again get continuity. Also, we can go from this side to these two capacitors and we get continuity, and then that goes to these RAM pins. So therefore, it is actually somewhat filtered. It's not the best filtering, but hey, it's, it's better than nothing. And at least they didn't lie this time. If I plug in my battery, place one lead on a ground, any ground, doesn't matter. All four of these are grounds. Then I place the other lead on the VCC pin. We see that I'm getting 15.16 volts, which actually is the voltage of my battery right now. If I place it on the 5 volt pin, I'm getting 4.88 volts, which like I said before is close enough to 5 volts. That's going to work. To jump these two pins together, you could just take a piece of scrap wire and solder it across either one of the two pins that you want, or you could use a jumper like this. It's completely up to you. I'm just going to place this jumper in temporarily. Just to show you that if I place this on these two RAM pins, once again, I should now be getting 5 volts, which I am. And let's test the other one, 5 volts. If I jump the VCC pin and the RAM pin and test both of these RAM pins up here, I now get, well, 13 volts. Well, it's probably not making a good connection. There we go. So now I'm pretty much getting the full voltage of the battery. So just to wrap things up, no you cannot have, uh, well, voltage in, which is this pin right here, this will be the yellow or video wire coming from your camera. And this is going to be the ground going to your camera. If you want 5 volts going to your camera, then you can have 5 volts right here by jumping the ramp in with the 5 volt pin. But you can't have, say, 5 volts going to your camera, and this is going to be your video out. The, so the video wire from your video transmitter will go here along with the ground. You can't have 5 volts and the full voltage of the battery if you do want to power your VTX with the full voltage. It's either or, you can't have both. So either both of these will be producing the full voltage or both will pr be producing 5 volts. Okay, now with that explained, you actually have more than just that option. But first, to jump these pins, I don't know how well you can see. I just took a 90 degree pin header took the plastic off, which gave me something like this, then I soldered this into one of those holes, which I chose to use the VCC hole for the full voltage of the battery, solder that in place, and then trim the pin a little bit shorter, and then soldered the other side of the pin to the middle RAM pin. Now back to what I was saying. This is my camera harness, and this is my video transmitter harness. Because I am using a video transmitter and camera that can handle the full voltage of the battery, for example, this Runcam Swift can handle 17 volts, and I'm running a 4S setup, so uh, that's high enough. Same thing goes for my video transmitter. Doing this allows me to use both of these power pins instead of having to you know, run 5 volts to one of them, or both of them, to power the camera, and then run the video transmitter power wire to the uh, remaining VBAT pin. The third option will be if you are using a video transmitter that does have a separate or its own 5 volt regulator, something like the Cricut video transmitters. And in this case, uh, you could power the video transmitter with the VBAT pin, or you could even solder your wires directly onto your battery leads or your PDB anywhere where it's getting a full voltage of the battery. It has its own 5 volt regulator and a separate power wire that will come back out and then you can use that to power your camera with 5 volts. So there is your three options. And it's going to be different for everybody depending on uh, the equipment you're using and the voltage ratings of the camera and video transmitter. But that does it guys. Thanks for watching and I will see you again soon.